Okay, so to understand uh, the skewness, let me con uh, consider the following set of discrete probability distribution. Suppose we have the following set of discrete probability distribution. Okay, the points are where x equal to small x at different points of time. The values are one, two, three, four, five, and six. The probabilities are, I denote the probability here by fx symbolically. Generally for discrete case, we uh, use this symbol, probability of x equal to small x. But here at this point, for simplicity, I'm considering this symbol, this function, fx for representing the probabilities. Probabilities are given to be 0 0.05, 0.15, Point three zero, point three zero, point one five, and point zero five. These are the probabilities. And if I'm saying that the probability distribution, it is a probability distribution, then immediately you need to check whether the total probability is one or not. Okay, because you know it is the fundamental criteria for a probability distribution, for a distribution to be a probability distribution that its total probability must be equal to zero. So if I add these figures, let me see, we will get, how much you are getting? We are getting 1.00. So yeah, the total probability is one. Okay, we are satisfied with this. First of all, let, let, us try to, let us try to put the curve and let's see how does it look like. We are going to put the curve in the next page. Okay, so I'm going to draw the axis. This is my fx axis and this is my x axis. And I'm drawing here the points, the discrete points are one, two, three, four, and five. And the points on the probability uh, axis are point, uh, zero 0.5, point 0.10, point 0.15, Point two zero, point two five, point three zero, point three five, and so on. Now, for x equal to one, the point is point zero five. The probability is point zero five. For x equal to two, the probability is point one five. For x equal to three, the probability is 0 0.30. For x equal to 4, the probability is 0 0.30. For x equal to 5, the probability is 0.15. I need one another point, which is x equal to 6, for which the probability is 0 0.05 once again. And if I drop the lines, if I draw a line diagram, we will get a figure, we will get figures like this. These are the figures. And hopefully, I'm hopeful that uh, this particular curve is, looks like a symmetric curve. So actually, if I join them by a freehand curve, I join these points, 
I'm actually getting a kind of normal curve over here. Okay. Now, this is the figure of the probability that I have, I, I have actually, get, I'm get actually getting from the given probability distribution. Can anyone tell me by writing in the chat box, what do we expect to get the value of alpha three, which is the measure of skewness over here? Can, you can anyone tell me what will be the measure of alpha three over here? Any idea? By, by intuitively, can you say what will be the value without doing the calculation? Because we have already seen the diagram. Chastik, Vittika. Yeah, close to, uh, you are saying, uh, someone has written me, uh, he has uh, written it, okay, he, what he has written is, uh, I'm taking it into con consideration. Anybody, you can send me direct message writing in the chat box. What do you expect the value would be? I have got only one response so far. Ritika, Aditi, any idea? Shastik? No, sir. Okay. Someone has given me the, um, an answer but uh, we'll check it. I will not disclose his or her name, but we'll check, we'll check and he will, or he or she will get to know that whether he's, he or she is right or wrong. Okay. <clears throat> so as I discussed in my previous uh, uh, session, that the measure of skewness is, requires uh, alpha, what is the measure of skewness? What is the formula for alpha three? It is um, mu three by sigma Q. And uh, mu three requires the, mu, mu three is having the formula mu three prime three mu two prime multiplied by mu and plus two mu q. Okay, this is the formula for mu three. And sigma, rather sigma square, is having the formula mu two prime minus mu one prime square. And you know that since mu one prime is equal to mu symbolically, so it can be written as mu two prime minus mu square. These are the formula. And you also know that mu, mu three prime is actually summation over X. I'm, I'm considering summation because it is a discrete probability distribution. It is X to the power three fx mu two prime is summation over x, x square fx. And we don't have to write mu one prime, rather we will write mu prime mu, which is summation over x, x into fx. Okay, this information that we have come across in the previous uh, session. We will calculate all of these quantities now. So we need these quantities. So let's begin. First of all, you make a chart, some, some columns. I will uh, add some columns over here in the table. The first column is I'm adding is X square. The second column that I'm adding is X cube. Third column that I'm adding is X FX. The fourth column that I'm adding is X square FX. The fifth column that I'm adding is X cube FX. And we can, we will calculate these individual values one after another. So quickly we can say that the values of these columns are one, four, 
9, 16, 25, and 36. The values of this column are 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and 216. Now you calculate the rest of the columns and tell me what is coming. You calculate the rest of the columns and you take some time and give me the summation of x fx from this column summation of x square fx from this column, summation of x cube fx from that column. Okay. Take some time and do it. Just check whether I have written all the values correctly or not. So just uh, check uh, whether the calculation is right. And now you see if the calculations are right and you have got your all of your columns, calculate the sum total of this 
x f x column, sum total of this x squared f x column, sum total of this x cube f x column. So if my calculation is right, sum total of this is coming as 3.5. So uh, sum total of x square fx is 13.7. I'm checking, just a minute. Yeah, it is 13.7. I have and also the got next one point one. How much? Fifty eight point one. Fifty eight point one. Okay, let me let me check. Let me check. Uh, I am also doing trying to do it by uh, my mobile phone calculator, so it is taking some time. Uh, nineteen point two plus. Yes, sir. It's fifty eight point one. Okay. Point eight. Yeah, you are right. It is fifty eight point one. Okay, so we have all got the values correctly. Now, yes, now you substitute the value over here. First of all, we'll calculate this quantity. Okay, first of all, we'll calculate the numerator and then we'll think about the denominator. So we get mu3 as mu3 prime that means this is my mu3 prime remember this is my mu2 prime and this is my mu1 mu1 prime or mu okay so i'm going to substitute them in the formula i'm using this formula so mu3 mu3 prime is 58.1 then 3 multiplied by mu2 prime, which is 13.7. 13 and mu is 3.5. And plus twice 3.5 whole cube. Now tell me what value is coming for this. So minus 48.4. Uh, then uh, please recheck your calculation because my intuition says that it should come something else. Otherwise, probably we have done some it's mistake. Zero. Yeah, exactly. You are getting zero? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. probably, probably uh, the person who has told me something else probably he has done some uh, something wrong about the bracketing you just check your bracketing and then you will uh, get you'll find something wrong over here it is zero definitely it is zero i have also checked it and we don't have to since it is zero we don't have to calculate a sigma sigma's calculation is not required at all so we are getting zero over here exactly zero over here now let me say something to you in my chat box, someone, someone has written part, something when I asked what he or she would expect to get the uh, result of this calculation, he, he or she replied that the result is close to zero. But now he or she is seeing that the result is exactly equal to, exactly equal to zero. Okay, so he's, he or she was partially uh, right. Now I am telling you that without calculating the thing, you can definitely say that the result is going to be zero because, because why the curve is symmetric. There is no biasness towards any side of the curve. It is neither positively biased nor it is negatively biased. Suppose, suppose one curve, 
is positively biased. Positively biased. Then from this calculation, we can intuitively say that the skewness of this of that particular curve would be greater than zero. If the curve is negatively biased, then the skewness of the curve would be less than zero. Okay, we will not be able to uh, get the exact value, but we can at least say that it would be positive and it would be negative. So zero is the benchmark. It happens when the curve is symmetric for all symmetric curves. If the curve is symmetric, we are always going to get zero value. If it is not, then uh, if it is the curve is not symmetric, we are go go going to get the positive or negative value accordingly, according as it is positively biased or negatively biased. So this is how we actually calculate the skewness of the curve. Okay. Now let's talk about the next part which is called the kartosis, kartosis of the curve. What do we mean by kartosis? Now, let, me under, let us understand this uh, particular term by a figure. Suppose, suppose my curve is symmetric, okay? And the curve looks like this. Here I'm not talking about, here I'm not talking about uh, the skewness part. So I'm taking a symmetric curve from the beginning. This is my figure one. My figure two is the following. This is also symmetric. And the, my last curve is figure three, which is, a, which is as following. That is also symmetric. What is the difference between bet, uh, among these three curves? What is the difference among these three curves? The three curves are different, not with respect to their symmetricity. They are different with respect to their pickedness. This curve is actually, as you see, this curve is moderately picked. This curve is highly picked curve. This curve is less picked. In statistics, they have got some special names. Moderately picked curves are actually called normal curves. Highly picked curves are actually normal curves or sometimes they are called mesocardic curve. Normal or mesocardic. Highly picked curve curves are actually called leptocardic curves. And less picked curve, or they are also called flat curves, they are called uh, platycardic curve. All of them are, all of these curves are symmetric, but their pickness is varying. Pickness varying, varying of the pickness means this is moderately deviated from the mean value of the data. The points situated on the, situated in the distribution, they are, are moderately, they are, they are moderately deviated from the mean value. Leptocardic means they are less deviated from the mean value. So they are very close towards the mean value. This difference is very 
small over here. And platycardic means they are highly deviated from the peaked value. Oh, sorry, from, from the mean. So this is the difference between the three different types of curves. And this is the, the measure of these things, the how much they are deviated, how much they are deviated. or the measure of measure of fitness fitness is actually called kartosis kartosis and this also can be quantified by the given formula the formula for measuring kartosis is the following the symbol is alpha 4 and we calculate the quantity mu4 and divided by standard deviation raised to the power 4 okay so definitely remember since it is not nothing about the thickness oh you have another class from oh acha acha sorry 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 okay so this is the measure of the thickness okay anyways uh, sorry measure of the kartosis and just give me one minute. I am going to give you the relation of this fourth moment about mean with respect to fourth the moments about the origin. The relation is mu pro, mu four prime, four mu three prime multiplied by mu plus six mu two prime multiplied by mu square minus three mu to the power four. Okay. And where you know that mu four prime is actually expectation of x to the power four, which is for discrete case, it is summation over x, x to the power four fx. Now you have class now, so I'm stopping here at right now. And uh, you try to solve this particular problem and try to see what sort of value you are getting from this calculation, okay? you have to just introduce one another extra column, two columns. One is for x to the power four over here. Another is for x to, another column is when probability fx is getting multiplied by x to the power four. Okay. 